hey, we're better than these guys, like, for real. Yeah. With the seventh overall pick, the Panthers selected Auburn defensive tackle Derrick Brown, which would immediately improve the interior defensive line. Throughout his career at Auburn, Derrick Brown was a disruptive defensive tackle, making impacts as both a pass rusher and a run stopper. So what we're going to do in this video is look at Derrick Brown's game, see what he's going to bring to the table, and why I'm so excited to see what he can become as an NFL defensive tackle. Let's first take a look at Derrick Brown as a pass rusher. According to stats from Pro Football Focus, Derrick Brown's 21% pass rush win rate ranks 8th among all interior defensive linemen in the country. However, despite his success as a pass rusher at the collegiate level, I think this is an area where he's still evolving and he hasn't quite reached his ceiling yet. With Derrick Brown, it all starts with the bull rush. He does a good job of taking that initial power step, which allows him to generate that power from his hips and lower body. Once he takes his power step, he's going to strike the offensive lineman, keeping his hands inside near the chest plate. Then he's going to maintain proper leverage. You always hear that term, low man wins. Well, Derrick Brown has a very good understanding of leverage, and it just allows him to maximize his bull rushes. At Auburn, Derrick Brown bench pressed 400 pounds, and his 590 pound squat, I believe, was a school record. So it just shows you the kind of power that he's able, to, strength and power that he's able to have, and it translates to the field. Now, one thing I will say, he does tend to fall in love with his bull rush at times, and you'd like to see him diversify his rush attack more and incorporate more hand technique into his arsenal as well. And we'll get to that later. But the bull rush is clearly his bread and butter and where he's had the most success in his pass rushes at the collegiate level. What makes Derrick Brown's pass rushes so effective is when he incorporates hand technique into his pass rush as well. Take this play for example, he's going to do a good job taking his power step, he's going to strike the offensive lineman and you see he keeps his right hand inside near the chest plate. Now watch his left hand, he's going to chop down on the lineman's elbow and this is going to prevent the offensive lineman from being able to put hands on him. Then he's going to be able to continue to drive him back because once you've disengaged his hands, he's basically done at that point. He's able to get make a play and force the incomplete pass. So you just see it's more to Derrick Brown's bull rush than simply overpowering the man in front of him. He also able to use his length and able to use his hand technique to be able to not only shove an offensive lineman back and collapse the pocket, but be able to disengage from him and also be able to make a play. A myth about Derrick Brown is that he only has bull rushes in his arsenal. Several times throughout his college career, you can see him incorporate more pass rush moves and trying to get to the quarterback. Here he's going to do a chop spin move where he'll do a good job chopping down on the lineman's hands and disengage him. Then watch the quick spin to the inside to be able to generate the quarterback pressure. Then you'll see it again here. He does a good job again setting up the offensive lineman, getting him on his heels. Then he's going to chop down, disengage his hands, do the quick spin inside. But this time they double team him. But what Derrick Brown does a good job of this time is he'll disrupt the passing lane, stick with the play and eventually get in on the tackle. So seeing things like this make me excited about what Derrick Brown can become as a pro. Derrick Brown also has a powerful rip move that he incorporates into his pass rush arsenal. He's going to fire out of his stance, come in low, and he'll watch him rip like he's throwing an uppercut into the sky. It's going to knock off the offensive lineman off balance. Now watch him point his toes to the quarterback so he can collapse the pocket, turn, and make the sack there. So right there he just shows a lot of power and athleticism to be able to rip through the lineman, turn the corner, and be able to generate the sack. He reverses his rip move quite often throughout his career. Here he's going to take an inside rush, and then again, look at his rip, just like he's punching the sky, being able to disengage from the lineman and get after the quarterback. Here he does a little bit differently. He's going to engage like he's doing a normal bull rush. He's going to get a good initial strike and push the lineman back a couple yards. Now you got to get rid of him, so he's going to use the rip to disengage from the lineman and get after the quarterback and force the throw away. On this play, watch what he does here. He takes his right hand, he's going to chop down on the offensive lineman's elbow. That's going to disengage his hands, and now he can do what he wants with him. So he's going to rip to further disengage from him. And here he's going to draw a holding penalty and also collapse the pocket and get a quarterback pressure. 
And then lastly here, you're going to see him again use an inside rush. And watch how forceful he is with the rip. It's like he's throwing an uppercut straight into the air. You know, both hands are in the air this time. And he's able to collapse the pocket once again and cause an advertent pass. Brown also incorporates finesse into his rush arsenal with a swim move. On this play, he's going to start with an open hand club. You want to keep your hand open so you can grab a fistful of jersey and keep him under control. I watch him swim right over top and get into the backfield and defeat the offensive lineman on that play. Here against LSU, he'll start with a like he's doing a normal bull rush. He's going to fire out of his stance, maintain proper leverage, and he's going to engage, keep his hands inside and swim right over top of the offensive lineman on that play. Here, back in Minnesota again, this time he's going to do a powerful open hand club again. Now watch how quickly he comes over top with the swim move. So you can just see the different ways that Derrick Brown's able to attack the passer. When you're a dominant bull rusher like Derrick Brown, you know, a power rusher, it's important to have moves in your arsenal to be able to exit and be able to disengage from the offensive lineman and get after the quarterback. One way to do that is the forklift. What Brown will do here, he's going to fire off his stance and get that initial punch like he's doing a bull rush. So in this case, what he'll do, watch his left hand's going to be in the inside near the chest plate of the lineman, and his right hand's going to come from the lineman's armpit and push his hand up. So by pushing his hand up, now he's got complete control over the lineman's hands. He's got proper leverage. Now watch what he's able to do as a result. He's just going to be able to toss him aside and be able to beat him and get after the quarterback to generate another pressure. So as you can see, Derrick Brown is evolving as a pass rusher. I'm excited to see what he can be as a pro as he continues to polish up on his hand technique and pass rush moves. Next, let's talk about Derrick Brown's versatility. He has the ability to play all of the defensive line positions, whether the zero technique over the top of center, shade to either side as a one technique, outside of the guard as a three technique, or even play five technique defensive end. Here against Florida, Auburn's going to be in this 30 front with the two three techniques, and Derrick Brown's going to be on the three outside of the guard. He's going to get a good initial strike here. Now watch him do this rip. Now watch him dip and bend the corner here like a defensive end. It just shows you the upside he has as a pass rusher. He's able to get in on the sack. So things like that excite me about what he can become at the next level. Here at the five technique, Derrick Brown's going to rush the passer and get a good initial punch, knocking the lineman back. But watch him here redirect and be able to get after the quarterback and cause the forced fumble. And on this next play, he's going to be at the five technique defensive end again. What he'll do here, he's going to come out, fire out of his stance. Now watch him give a little shake and do an open hand club move with his right hand. He's able to disengage from the tackle, get after the quarterback, and get another set. On this last play, he'll be against Greg Little, who I'm sure you're all familiar with. What he'll do here, he's lined up as a five technique outside of Greg Little to tackle. Here's going to do a quick little swim right over Greg Little, over the top, give him a little shake, get into the backfield, and make the play. So you just see the versatility that Derrick Brown has. What stands out about Derrick Brown on film is his elite ball get off. He has great snap anticipation, but not only that, he just comes out of his stance like a coming out of a cannon. He maintains a good pad, good low pad level. He has good hand placement to drive the blocker into the backfield. And he does a good job of shedding him and being able to get in and make tackles for loss. Here against Alabama, you just see how quickly he's able to get off the ball. He gets underneath the lineman, able to stand him up, shed him, and be able to make the tackle for a loss. So. His elite ball get off, explosion out of his stance. All these factors just helped him be such a productive run defender in college. My favorite play was his upcoming one against Oregon, where you see Auburn backed up against the goal line. Just watch Derrick Brown fire out of his stance like a cannon, pushing the offensive lineman three, four, five yards back, getting into the backfield and causing that disruption. And here against Tennessee, once again, you'll see Derrick Brown coming out of his stance. You see he gets a head start on all of his teammates. He beats the lineman to the point of attack. He's able to get into the backfield and, again, be so disruptive against the run because of his elite ball get-off. Derrick Brown's hand violence really shows up on tape. He does a good job of getting that first initial punch, and he has those long arms to lock out the offensive lineman and stun him in his tracks. Once he does that, he's able to find the football, stack, and shed the offensive lineman to get rid of him, and then get in and make a play on the ball. His next several clips, you'll just see Derrick Brown being able to do exactly that, which is use that first initial punch to stun the offensive lineman, use the long arms to lock him out, and then stack, shed, and find the football and make a play.
So when you put it all together, his power step, his strong initial punch, his elite ball get off, he's very effective at controlling the line of scrimmage, particularly in short yardage situations. On this play against Minnesota, you're going to see him be able to stand up, not only stand him up, but push the offensive lineman two yards into the backfield and create a pile up to get the fourth down stop. And here again against LSU, you're going to see Brown take on a double team and there's nowhere for the running back to go. It allows his linebackers to roam cleanly. Speaking of double teams, this is another area where Brown adds value to this defense. By being able to eat up blocks and take on double teams, he allows his linebackers to roam freely, read and react, stay clean, and make plays on the running back. Here you'll see Brown take on this double team against Florida and watch his linebacker be able to read, react, meet the running back in the hole, and knock the ball loose and force the turnover for Auburn. You just see this throughout his career. Again against Alabama, you're going to see Al uh, Derek Brown rather take on this double team here. Once again, his linebacker is able to come meet the running back into the hole, not having to deal with all of the clutter or having to fight off blocks. Luke Keekley last year and Shaq Thompson could have really used this, so I know Shaq will be happy to have a guy like Brown that will be able to take on double teams, set the edge, in it, for example, on this play here, and stay clean and be able to make tackles. So that's another area where Derrick Brown will add value to the defense, except this won't stow up on the stat sheet. So you just see the various ways that he can impact the game without even putting numbers into a box score. So his overall skill set allows him to control and penetrate gaps effectively. These are the traits that make him such an elite run defender. We talked earlier about his elite ball get off. Here you'll see he's able to fire out of his stance and leave the offensive lineman in the dust. He never had a chance from the start and he's able to get in the backfield and get a tackle for a loss. Because of that quick first step, he's very difficult to reach block. Like on this play, the lineman's supposed to reach block him here, but Brown's able to get his head across and when with his fire out of his stance the way he does and stay low and maintain that leverage, he pushes the guard back into the running back, getting the tackle for a loss. Here he's able to get the play down from the opposite side. He gets his head across the lineman, that quick first step makes it difficult for the lineman to seal him off. He's able to once again get in on the tackle. And lastly, you'll see they're going to try to run this outside zone towards Derrick Brown's side. But here, he's able to control the line of scrimmage, force the play inside to where his help is, and they're able to gang tackle and limit any additional yards. And last but not least, I really like Derrick Brown's motor as he's always hustling and plays to the whistle. On his first play, he's going to try this bull rush against Alabama, but he's not going to be successful in getting to the quarterback. But here, he doesn't give up on the play. Watch how he continuously pursues the quarterback downfield and gets the big hit on the sideline. Then on his next play, Al Auburn's going to try to run this stunt here. And Derrick Brown's going to realize that he's not going to be able to get to the quarterback in time. So instead, he's going to read his eyes, disrupt the passing lane, get his hands up, and bat the ball down. And he keeps playing once the quarterback catches it and he's able to tackle him to get the tackle for a loss on that play. Here, Minnesota's going to try to run a screen. Derrick Brown recognizes the screen and watch, he still never gives up on the play, chases the wide receiver down from behind and prevents him from getting the first down. And lastly, here in the red zone against Texas A&M, you're going to watch Derrick Brown not be able to have another unsuccessful bull rush, but instead of giving up on the play, he stays with it, reads the quarterback's eyes, he's able to disrupt the passing lane and bat the ball down. So there you have it. Now you see some of the traits that makes Derrick Brown an elite defensive tackle prospect. He has a very quick first step, very explosive, and very disruptive in both the run and the pass. I want to see him continue to evolve his hand technique and evolve as a pass rusher as I think those specific traits will allow him to be an all-pro in this league for years to come. At a minimum, I see him being a quality starter, instant impact player, and he'll solidify this position for a number of years.